All right, guys, so that is it. The preseason is over, and the next time the Pistons tip it off, it will be the real deal. This will be for all the glory. The season will officially have started, and it is our time to get back to the playoffs, and we're going to talk about that in this video. So I'm going to give you guys my after preseason predictions for the Detroit Pistons, seeing um, some things, some good, bad, and ugly of what I saw during the preseason and throughout summer camp and all that other stuff. So yeah, we're about to break this down real quick, so let's go. So we're going to start off with the bad, okay, because I don't want to leave you guys with a sour taste in your mouth. I don't want to give you guys all the good stuff and then just throw that all out the window with the bad news. But luckily, there isn't much bad to talk about, or at least the bad isn't too bad. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is Contavious Caldwell Pope, KCP, KC3. You already know, I'm very high on this guy. I made a video about him earlier, so if you, so if you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out. But something concerned me from the preseason. He didn't seem to be looking for his shot. And what I mean was, after the first game against Indiana Pacers, he was, what, what was it, like five out of six from three or six out of seven from three. But after that game, he was only attempting like five or six field goals per game. He doesn't seem to be looking for his shot at all. And that's one of the things this offense needs him to look for his shot because his great shooting, his slashing ability will open up the floor for other players like Andre Drummond and the Reggie Jackson picks a roll. So he is a pivotal part of the offense and he needs to get more involved. Basically, we need our shooters to shoot. So the next thing we're going to talk about is ball movement. This wasn't a huge deal at all, but there were a lot of times in the game where the Pistons players would try and go one-on-one -on -one or either one pass and then a shot. And when we are at the best during the preseason was when the ball was constantly moving and the defender was constantly having to scrap which we had so many offensive threats on the field. But I feel like some of our offensive threats thought, believe too much in their offense, which they should because they are really good offensive players. But it makes it much easier for the defender to stop one player than to the five on the court. And it's just a habit that will get worked up during the regular season. Like all of these things, none of them are major problems. None of them are need to be like addressed during like a trade or give this player less minutes. Maybe Spencer Dunwitty, of course, but he won't be seeing much play time, let's be honest. Um, yeah, but most of these questions can't be addressed just from practice and just from just from experience because once again, this is a young team, so with experience, they will get better. And the final thing I saw that I think is a bit of a problem is Andre Drummond being double teamed. When Andre Drummond is double teamed, he seems to panic a bit, which is understandable. I mean, he's never been double teamed like this before. I mean, defenders are trying to trap him and he seems to panic which causes a lot of turnovers, or he'll just force up a very, very ill-advised shot. When all he really has to do is when he's getting double teamed is just hold the ball up high and kick it out to one of the open shooters that are around him. Because if you have two players on you, that means that someone is not being defended and the, every last single one of the other players on the team on the floor at that time alongside Andre Drummond is a shooter. But once again, this will be fixed with experience, he is a young player. This is the first time he's ever seen real double teams, so he's gonna learn quickly and he's gonna learn what to do. And then that's gonna be when this team really takes off offensively too. Besides those things, that is all that really needs to be fixed. Like I said, it was nothing major. There was no bad signs. They went three and five, but like I said, it was just the preseason, so it doesn't matter. That, that translates nothing over to the regular season, so we shouldn't be worried about that. But other than that, Let's get into the good stuff. And why not start with the big man, Andre Drummond? He finally has a post game. I mean, we saw some little glimpses like he had developed like a little baby hook shot towards the end of last year, but now he almost has like not a fully developed post game at all, but it's getting there. It's much, much better than it was last year. And that's why defenders are trying to double team him because he's so big, he's so strong, he's much more athletic and much more quick than most of the other centers in the NBA that they can't guard him one-on-one. -on -one. There were a few plays already just during the preseason where he'd get the ball in his elbow, he'd square up to his defender, and then just blow by them, blow by them to the rim, draw the contact, get the and one, and that you don't see that every day from a big man, especially his size. I think low-key Andre Drummond really wants to be a point guard because he, when you see him dribble, I, I swear it's like the funniest thing, you see him dribble, it looks so strange because you don't see a big man like a big man like him try and do the things that he does like instead of dunking he'll try and do like a double clutch scoop layup or a reverse layup or stuff like that it's really good to see that he has an offensive game developing and he seems very confident in himself which is great now for the next thing that's a good thing about the Pistons this year and I talked about him twice already is Stanley Johnson it's not often that you see a rookie that comes in that's ready to impact the league like he is if no one else on the team had confidence in themselves 
He has enough confidence to go around so it would not be a problem at all. He will make you confident one way or the other. He's not shy about shooting the ball or handling the ball or anything. He does it like he's done it before. He's done this like he's a like a veteran. He looks, he plays like he's a veteran. He still makes the rookie mistakes, but in his mind, He's the best player on the court. That's what I believe. He believes he is the best player on the court in his mind. And as long as he keeps putting in the work ethic and continues to grind and continues to hustle, eventually that will be true and sooner than later as well. Another very good thing that I saw from the Pistons during the preseason is Marcus Morris. Am I the only one who sees a bunch of Rasheed Wallace in him? Now I did hear that Marcus Morris has been working with Rasheed Wallace during the offseason, but it's like eerily, like scarily similar his game is scarily similar to Rasheed Wallace, like the way his turnaround jumper, just his three point stroke, everything just screams Rasheed Wallace 2.0, but like a smaller, smaller version of Rasheed Wallace. That, that being said, I still think he should be the Pistons starting four and Stanley Johnson should be the starting three. So now overall, what do I think about the Detroit Pistons? Can I hear you say playoffs one time? Can I hear you say playoffs two times? Can I hear you say playoffs three times. That's right, because I think the Detroit Pistons are definitely without a doubt ending their playoff drought this year. I know people like Pistons fans say that every year, but honestly, I didn't think that last year, besides the fact like when they went on that tier, but when they had Josh Smith at the beginning of the year, I didn't think they're gonna get the playoff. But then when they started going on that tier with Brandon Jennings, I did think they were gonna go to the playoffs. And then when Brandon Jennings got injured, I no longer thought they were going to the playoffs. So last year was like a roller coaster ride of emotions. And the year before that, I'm not gonna lie, at the beginning when I saw Josh Smith signing, I was like, all right, they might have a chance, but then as the season progressed, obviously I realized that wasn't happening. But yeah, this is a completely different year, a completely different story, a completely different team, and they are without a doubt going to the NBA playoffs. Let me know what you guys thought about the Pistons down below, what you saw that they need to work on, what you saw that stood out to you, and always, always make sure to subscribe. And just a warning, this isn't a solely Detroit Pistons-based channel. Um, I do like talking about them. They are my favorite team to talk about. They're the team I know the most about. I just didn't feel... I tried to talk about other teams, but... You know, it's so hard to be an enthusiast from so many teams. I do follow a lot of teams, but I can't give you the people that want to talk... want to hear about that team as in-depth like of a discussion as I can for the Pistons, so it's just not fair for them. Because I know about that team, but I don't know, like, really, like, the down and dirty about that team. Just like people who say they know about the Pistons, like, but they don't really know the Pistons. You, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but yeah, so I just didn't feel like it was fair for me to give my opinion on teams I didn't know as much about as I could. But, um, yeah, so this channel is going to be about other things too, so don't, it's not going to be a solely Detroit Pistons based channel, even though there will be Pistons content on that. I'm still trying to figure out how to, uh, you know, uh, incorporate Pistons into this channel. Um, but yeah, until then, it's been Zach from Simon Comedy. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm going to catch you guys later. Peace. article came out on ESPN or NBA.com or something like that uh, where a bunch of these analysts picked their favorites to win Rookie of the Year.